So what actually is caffeine and what effects does it have on the human body as a whole? Well, caffeine is a naturally occurring chemical with a whole variety of barely pronounceable names including trimethylxanthine, so it's easy to see why it's normally just called caffeine. It contains four elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. It can be lethal if you can consume more than four grams of it at once. So thankfully, the amount commonly found in foods which only make it very difficult to get through that much caffeine. Now over 60 different plants produce caffeine. It's commonly found in their leaves, and their seeds and sometimes even in their bark. Common sources that make it into our diet include things like tea leaves and coffee beans. In plants it acts as a natural pesticide, killing insects that might otherwise damage the plant as they try to eat it. Thankfully, larger mammals like ourselves require a far larger dose to kill us, though the chemical effects are noticeable at a much lower dosage. The problem with the dosage is that different varieties of common substances may contain widely differing amounts of caffeine, making it difficult to know exactly how much caffeine you've actually taken in. For instance, a cup of coffee contains anywhere from 30 to 180 milligrams of caffeine, and in a standard bar of chocolate can have anywhere from 10 to 100 milligrams. Thought though that less than 400 milligrams a day is not likely to produce any serious negative side effects, but 10 times that amount at a single time may be lethal. This of course figures for a healthy adult. More vulnerable groups like children would require far less to be affected. So that leaves us with a question, what's actually going on inside the human body when we consume caffeine? Well, caffeine directly affects the central nervous system. The action of caffeine and other methylxanthines interfere with the action of adenosine. Adenosine itself suppresses neural activity in the brain and dilates the, uh, the blood vessels, which in turn enables you to sleep, whilst allowing oxygenated blood still to move around your body with just a gentle heartbeat. So the introduction of caffeine into the system stimulates the body so it's alert and ready for action. This ready for, this for action is also enhanced by caffeine's presence at the sites of neurotransmitters since this stimulates the adrenal glands to produce additional adrenaline. Putting all these together you get the common effects of caffeine as not being able to sleep, a fast erratic heartbeat, high blood pressure and nervousness or jitteriness. Now, one of the issues with caffeine, like nearly all drugs, is that the human body builds up a tolerance to them over time and compensates with the body's internal mechanisms coping with an expected level of caffeine. This means that not only does the initial hit of caffeine reach its peak after about an hour and then tails off to be really completely gone in six hours, but also after that there's a trough or an overcorrection for the lack of caffeine occurs. However, if during that six hours you continue to consume some caffeine, that trough will fail to appear until you actually do stop. But also, the new caffeine won't give you the boost as did the first one. Instead, it will keep you at that normal operating state that your body had before you had any caffeine in the first place. Now, caffeine does have some health benefits, including lowering your risk to some cancers, strokes, type 2 diabetes, and some eye disorders. But there are also some health risks including things like gout, incontinence, insomnia, headaches and hypertension. So, like nearly all things in life, if you do consume caffeine, moderation is the key.